He's the God, yes He is. He's the greatest Lord of all. He will come and take His sheep, separate him from. All right. Uh, hi guys. So my name's Kingsley. Uh, all of this is new to me, by the way. So I thought I'd share a little bit for those of you who don't know me. Um, a little bit about my story. Um, I'm gonna try to be a bit brief because um, I don't want you to be watching 10 minutes of me waffling. So a bit of my story. I grew up in a in a reasonable home. I think it's a good home. Uh, academically, I was good. I was good at school, top of the class kind of stuff. Uh, I had an affinity. I was I was attracted to always the wrong crowd. Anyway, that's the kind of people you hang around with, and um, and eventually hanging around. We went from stealing dust caps, um, eventually we were breaking into cars and then breaking into houses and stuff. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of that kind of stuff and then it graduates to drugs, etc, etc, etc. And as time progressed, obviously I'm doing well in school. Um, I have plans of being a doctor. Um, but again, my life outside of school was completely different. So. And I was brought up in a Christian home, in a religious home, so I had the awareness of, of God, of Jesus. Um, but um, that's just how life is, isn't it? That's how sin is. It starts small and then it gets uncontrollable. Uh, fast forward, I'm living a life of completely paranoid, uh, constantly watching my back. I'm changing routes. Every time I go to college, I take different routes all the time just to make sure anybody tracking me couldn't catch me. And uh, my younger brother got dragged into this whole thing and then I'm worrying about my life and his life. Um, my older brother got my older brother got saved, he gave his life to Jesus and I could see the stark contrast. Um, sorry about the train going past. I could see the stark contrast um, in his life and it was so funny, you can come to our house, my mum's house, and um, one room is banging out 50 cents and Eminem like vulgar music and then next door you can hear all this christian music it was a uh, definitely a clash of sounds and uh, but we could see how his life has changed and he was happy he did things like go bowling who goes bowling i mean like when you're in the rows you don't go bowling who the heck goes bowling but um so they were, yeah they were living like a normal life they got gotta do stuff and i could see he was much he was much happier and um, so we watched that and we could see there's a genuine change and I'm well you have to bear in mind I knew about God so as far as I was concerned I believed in God but um, it never really impacted how I lived um, many years later a few near-death experiences um, I decided to, to give my life to Christ we used to roll up to church and then just hide our weapons and park our bikes outside of the church building and it was so peaceful in there uh, and that was one of the things we used to do. We just ro ro rode our bikes, parked up and went into the church just to get a break from the roads. Um, and then I gave my life to Christ about 2006. Obviously the journey, the journey has been up and down to, since then. But uh, well, when, I, when I first gave my life, the journey was up and down. Um, and I've just grown, I've grown, I've grown, I've had good people around me. Uh, and people that have discipled me. Um, men that will take you in, men you don't know take you in, bring you into their houses, uh, bring you to their homes and um, and then just show you the ropes and that's one of the things that we lacked on the roads. I think on the roads you wanted that belonging and a lot of us didn't have our dad's present so we're all riding off each other. But um, what you lacked was that you never really had that guy that would take you in and, and teach you. It was always to get you to do something and then you learn by doing the thing but that's more for their own benefit but people people that will take you in and try and teach you how to be a man uh disciple you help you to grow in your walk with christ and uh and it's been it's been great since then i mean obviously i've gone on to get married now i've got four four beautiful girls and uh yeah the music obviously music is a it's been a big part of my life and i started doing music uh and and it was great what we do with, with the church music for us is we use it as a tool to reach to reach people that you couldn't typically get to come into a church maybe you can get them to come to a concert an event you're doing in the weekend say Saturday so that's what we were doing and that gave us the opportunity to travel the world uh, go into different venues um, and using music to reach out to people 
um, we draw the people, draw a crowd, and then we preach the gospel to them. And that's that's the main aim, music music for us anyway. So I hadn't really considered doing albums and, and recording music per se. Uh, I had a, quite a, an experience that shook me up around 2010 times, where um, we I think we got sidetracked. I mean, I can say that now in hindsight, but uh, we got involved with the scene. Uh, that was buzzing at the, at the time for gospel music. Uh, started doing videos and recording music, and then we went from really focusing the music on just trying to draw people and get people into a building or a hall or a venue to, to preach, to stay show kind of stuff. And, um, and then it became more about us and how we can propel, um, propel our image and propel our music careers. And that was never what we set out to do. Um, so yeah, a lot of us that started off in that scene, uh, the whole thing got disbanded. Um, unfortunately, many of my friends aren't, um, they're not Christians anymore. Well, for sure, they're not serving God in this capacity anymore. And uh, so that was tragic. That really shook me up. So I, I intentionally never recorded any music. For the last 10 years, I haven't recorded any music. I've written loads of songs. Um, but our recording wasn't wasn't part of that because yeah, I was still scarred and just trying to make sure I'm so far from this line that there's no chance of me sidestepping and, and then tripping over and, and, and stepping beyond the line. Obviously, I, that was an extreme reaction, um, but that was what I had to do to keep my salvation. Um, so Corona hit and that's what happened. That's what really changed. Corona, Corona hit and then we couldn't do what we do as a typical church. We didn't, yeah, we couldn't just go to venues and, and set up and, and do a concert. So we had to live stream. So we adapted and started live streaming. Uh, and then a couple of my friends um, released an EP and we can use an EP and preach in the EP and then draw out to people. So at the time I was recording music, but I was just recording just so I can, I guess, build a catalog of something I can look back for many, many years. But I thought, yeah, why not? Why not drop a project? Um, especially when we're now reaching people remotely. Oh, why not? And uh, that's how Ghosts and Sheep came about. So Ghosts and Sheep, Ghosts and Sheep, the album, uh, the name Goats. So obviously Goats and Sheep. You got the G uh, O A T S. So I've I've got I've named it that way because one, the greatest of all time. Okay, so Jesus Christ is the greatest of all time. When you're talking about God, people have all types of things they believe in but Jesus Christ is the greatest of all time and then you also have the goats on the animal so it says Jesus is going to come back and separate the goats from the sheep so there was a there's a play on words there's a double meaning there the goat as the greatest of all time and the goat as in the heathen versus the sheep which is um, the children of God so and and that that difference there and the reason why I've also named that is is typically you would one of the things that happened when I told my friends on the roads that I was um, following Jesus Christ. They said, uh, Kingsley, you're gonna be a slave. You're never gonna make money. Um, you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna be broke. You're gonna be slave. There's a lot of, we fell out, we fell out. And um, so you think about it, Christianity is seen to, to, to hold you bound because you can't do a lot of things. There's a lot of things you can't do. Um, so you have one type of freedom that allows you to do everything and then leaves you as a slave to sin, so you're bound. So I always call it like freedom with a really loose harness. So you feel you're free, but the chain is just giving you some slack. That's all it is. And then you've got from my side, what we would say we're bound or slave, but you're slave to a king. So we have a freedom within a confine. And uh, and I know what I'd rather choose. I'd rather be a slave to, 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 to God than yeah, be bound by my sins. And that's what it is. So goats and sheep, that's the, that's the album name. Is he? That's right. It wasn't we. It wasn't we. we took the knee. Took the knee. Snowy, clean. Snowy clean. Now we don't die. We go to sea. Go to sea. 